part 31 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using custom view engines with ASP.NET MVC. Please watch part 30 before proceeding. We know that out of the box, ASP.NET MVC supports two view engines, ASPX and Razor. Besides these two, there are several other custom view engines that can be used with ASP.NET MVC. We can use Park, NAML, Sharpdown, Braille, and there are several others as well. In this video, let's discuss using Spark View Engine. So obviously the first step here is to install the Spark View Engine. And the best way to do that is by using NuGet Package Manager. So let's flip to Visual Studio. And to get to NuGet Package Manager, click on Tools, Library Package Manager, Manage NuGet Packages for Solutions. And then let's search for Spark View Engine. We are using MVC4 project here. So if we navigate to page 2, we have the spark.web.mvc4, click install. Now this should automatically install any dependencies as well. So it's installing the Spark View Engine now. And then once that is done, click on close. Now we have the Spark View Engine installed and it's configured for us automatically by the NuGet Package Manager. Now if I go to this index action method within this employee controller and then once I right click and then select add view from the context menu so here within this add view dialog box we have this view engine drop down list and notice that at the moment I only have those two view engines ASPX and Razor if you want this Spark view engine to be displayed within this drop down list then we have to navigate to this path. So this is the path where we have the templates used by that add view dialog box. So let's uh, navigate to this path. So it's C colon program files, Microsoft Visual Studio 10, common 7 IDE, item templates, C sharp, web, since we, our project is of type MVC4. So that's the folder. And then within that we have code templates and then add view. Okay, so let's navigate to that path. If you're using an MVC3 project, then instead of, you know, MVC4, it will be MVC3 folder there in that path. I'll have this path available on my blog. So let's click on start and get to the run window. Let's navigate to that path. And notice that within this folder, we have these two, uh, within this add view folder, we have this ASPX C sharp and CSHTML. This folder is for this ASPX view. So when we go to add view, so the the first folder right here is for that ASPX view and the second folder is for the Razor view. Okay, so now we want another folder for our Spark view engine. So let's go ahead and create a new folder and let's call it Spark. Okay, and then within this folder we need to have an XML file that's going to contain the configuration. Okay, so I already have that XML file, so if you look at this, we have to name this XML file as viewengine.xml. So let me open this now. And if you look at this, it's a pretty simple XML file. Uh, so here we have view engine tag, and then there are several attributes, display name. Okay, so that attribute specifies the name of the view engine. So here, whatever is the name that you want to be displayed. So since we want the name as Spark, I have given the display name as Spark. And view file extension, you know, if it is a Razor view file, then it's going to have CSHTML. Whereas if it's an ASPX view, then it's going to have ASPX extension. Spark view is going to have .spark extension. And then the default layout page, and then partial views, if you are creating a partial view, what's the extension of that? So pretty straightforward XML there. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to copy and paste that XML file. So at the moment, this XML file is present in my C, um, C drive files directory. So I'm going to copy that and paste this into our Spark directory within that add view folder. Okay, so once this is done, now let's go back to this controller action method. Let's right click on that, add view. And notice that now I have the Spark view engine listed there. Okay, now look at this. Once I select a Razor view, and then once I check this box, create a strongly typed view, and then if I select a model class, let's select any of the class. Look at this. I have a scaffold template here. So where are these templates coming from? These templates, so this is a Razor view engine. So if we go back to that folder, 
So if we go to this CS HTML, which is for the razor views, look at this. I have these templates right here, and these templates are what is showing that templates within that add view um, dialog box. But then if you look at Spark, we don't have any templates there. That's why if I come here, if I right click on the controller action method, select add view, and then if we select Spark there, and then once I select this checkbox, let's select a class and look at this. I don't have any scaffold templates there. Now we have to copy the Spark specific templates into that folder. Once we do that, we'll be able to use them in the same way as we are using, you know, Razor and ASPX views. Okay, but that is beyond the scope of this video series, I mean video tutorial, creating Spark specific view templates. The idea here is, uh, you know, this is extensible, MVC is extensible, so we can plug in the view engines of our choice, and it's possible uh, with ASP.NET MVC. All right, on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.